Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and the Blade Show may have been canceled, but we're still celebrating Blade Show week by hanging out with some of our favorite friends in the knife industry. Today we've got Russell from Artisan Cutlery and CJRB. He's here to show us some new knives. Russell, how are you, my friend? Doing good, doing good. Just kind of stuck in a very small room. If This is the Artisan Studio. Hello, how are you doing, David? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Glad Excellent. to see you're doing well also. Uh, and excited oh, yeah. to share some new knives with our uh, with our audience here. Yes, what do we got yes. to, to take a look at today? All right. So first of all, one, I'm going to switch over to my, my tabletop cam. We have right here the CGRB RIA. This is a really cool looking gentleman style model we've been working on for a bit. And we really wanted to keep things nice and slim and tight on this guy. This one has... A really, uh, actually, I'm not quite sure how to classify this blade style, but I'd like to think of it like a steak knife. It's got its belly towards the top and a thin grind back towards the bottom. This one is nice and thin. It is a single side thumb stud, so sorry lefties. We've actually changed up the clip a little bit, so let's bring that towards the camera. We actually have recessed the screws on this one and changed the style to kind of uh, slim down along with the rear. And this has like many of our other CGR, CGRB models, nice contour G10. So that is the Rhea. On top of that, we also offer this in a Micarta model with our new proprietary steel, AR RPM9. So you get an upgraded steel. This one actually, uh, I, uh, we made a little factory titanium clip on this guy. So that's some little, little cool for the, the prototype version. And this is just such a neat knife. Like you get the classiness of the micarta, great blade shape, really cool. Now I know people are are really excited to learn more about that uh, that new steel. As am I. Um, you know your new budget oriented powder metallurgy steel. Uh, we'll get mm -hmm. back to the knife in a second. But what can you tell us about that steel? Um, I know you're you know you're targeting a budget arena. Was there a certain uh, sort of performance threshold that you were shooting for? Performance wise, it hits right in the middle of D2 and 14C 28N. It's essentially designed to be a better budget steel. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we ensured that this would, one, take away the corrosion issues with D2 and perform a little longer than 14C. So with that said, it also does a couple things that are a little special is that one, since it's a powdered steel, um, it does have a finer grain structure which means that it does sharpen easier. However, we ran into one really neat anomaly. Uh, this steel not only sharpens easily, it maintains the hardness of something similar to D2, so it's got that good you know, hardness level, but it strops and maintains a fine edge really quickly. So we have, I have a couple people who are testing this knife, and what I've gotten so far, all these guys are scratching their hair over, is you can strop this thing back to hair popping sharpness really fast well if you're going to take, do a full sharpening job it takes a little time but it maintains the edge so i am not i'm not a metallurgist i'm not you know i like i like knife steel i certainly have a, a soft spot for super steels this thing has hit a very strange and, um, and magical mark of being long lasting high sharpness high corrosion resistance and easy to sharpen at, a, at its budget Right. Like it's not going to perform like M390. It's not going to have the toughness of, of 3V. It's not going to, you know, take an edge like M4, but it is a budget-oriented option. And it's really neat because it hits all the boxes of what someone probably wants in a budget steel in terms of EDC orientation without sacrificing on any of the major aspects of either hardness, overall sharpness, or corrosion resistance. So it's, it's pretty neat. Um, my only problem is I can't give away the formula. Of because course. This is, yeah, this is a Chinese made steel. We have a degree of protection on it, but we need to make sure we can have it fully protected before we can just, sh you know, show what the formula is. And because of that, you know, I've, I've gotten plenty of gripes of people asking, you know, oh, you're just you're just making powder D2. It's like, well, then it would be K110, which it's not. So uh, I've gotten my sh fair share of criticism or we have gotten our fair share of criticism over that. But at this point, testing of it has been passed off to reviewers and, you know, online personalities and people that we trust to play with the knives. So I've gotten a lot of people coming back saying this stuff's amazing. And I'll take that with a grain of salt for now. Uh, so far, our factory tests have proven, yeah, this steel holds up under all the categories that we want. 
It's not like we're going to go and like, you know, our tests are pretty mechanical. It's with machines. It's with lasers. If we want performance, I have a guy out, you know, he's on a boat in the bay and seeing how it deals with salt. I have a friend who's been cutting open bottles of ferric chloride with it to see how it holds up with corrosion, which if it can cut open a bottle of ferric chloride and not turn black, it's pretty good. Like yeah. I have people who are doing stupid stuff like me. I tried to do a little concrete hammering. And uh, to be fair, the edge of mine, you know, this is my sample one because this is actually a blem. Um, I don't know if I could camera so you can't see, but the edge right here definitely took some damage, but it rolled, it didn't chip. Um, I will say it's a pretty bad roll, but at the same time, I'm smacking concrete with a knife like this. With a budget steel. Know, yeah, and it's it's a point, you know, it's it's point one stock, man. Like, I'm not expecting, it's like you take a TRM Atom and you start hammering it into concrete and say, whoa, what my Atom break? It's like, yeah, well, it's not made for that. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm going to sit there and, like, cut copper wire on concrete and the, and the steel will maintain, but I don't think even M4 could do that. Or 3V. Um so yeah, the performance of it is to spec so far. I, we have not found any massively outstanding problems with it. I'm waiting for some guy to just take this, take the knife and cut something, and all of a sudden the thing just shatters like glass. And maybe we'll call that a maybe we'll call it a feature and not a defect. I don't know. So, well, I'm uh, really excited. I know you uh, you sent us one sample here yeah. for me to kind of test out and play around with uh, the steel play as well. Man. I'm looking forward to testing it myself too. Have fun with it. Just let us know how it performs. Let us know what your thoughts are. We are really proud of it. It was a project that we kind of had under wraps for a long time because we just had so many people saying they're tired of D2. I get it. Like, I, I happen to like D2. I also don't happen to live in a humid environment. I live in California. We're, we're on fire all the time. There's no, there's no humidity here anyway. But yeah, if you leave in your pocket a long time, it's sweaty, it's gross, you go to the beach, you go, you know, you get in the water, you happen to, you know, just be sitting in a really hot room, and, you know, it's in your pocket. Yeah, you get a couple of little rust marks, and I don't like rust marks. I like my knives to be clean. And to kind of, you know, we could, we, we actually did switch over to 12C27N on some of our models. So the RIA comes in 12C27N for those people who want a Sandvik steel. And it's fine. 12C is great. It's an excellent budget steel. But we wanted something just a hair better. And I think we achieved that. So we're, we're pretty proud of it. Excellent. So what I uh, really like about this design, Russell, it's 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 nice and streamlined. It's nice and sleek. Um, it's kind of just you know one of those essence of pocket knives types of designs. Yes. But my favorite part about it it's, is the action on it. You've got that small thumb stud there, and it's at just the right placement. The first time when you sent us these prototypes, the first time I opened it, I thought it was assisted. That's how great it was it's flying so out. It's so good. It's so good. Just the angle of the of the stud really makes it like it really just has that nice pop to it. And it just, you know, it's hard to nail this. Like we had to get the angles just right to make it work because normally when you have these, you know, the studs in this position where it's inset into the the frame, they're hard to access. So we had to make sure it was raised just enough and had the right amount of clearance. And also, I'm really happy with this one because I know I've had people say that, oh, it's it's hard to reach liners. Well, that's why we actually kept, let's see if I can switch, let's do left-handed. So that's why we had the um, the, the little, I guess you call it an indent here. So you could actually slide your, oh, God, I can't do it left-handed, but you can actually just use the tip of your thumb to kind of get in there and drop the knife. You don't have to go all the way into the liner flat like you would with a regular, or well, I guess a more conventional liner lock you can just use the tip of your thumb and it, it does add a bit of cleanness to the to the design of it like it, it just looks so slick we are really happy with the way this turned out in particular because this is kind of a it's a departure from the norm you don't find a lot of knives that feel this gentlemanly at this price point and on top of that this isn't exactly what i would call a light duty knife we still have some pretty substantial liners and while the blade isn't big, the stock is, you know, it's a slicey knife, but it's not super tiny. And the, the, the belly of it, because the belly is up top, you get plenty of strength in the tip of the blade. I am this is just, just a good design. We all put our heads together on this one and kind of just came out with something great. Sometimes so, the, yeah. those little simpler things are better, but it's not, simple's the wrong word because it, it may be very streamlined, but it's all about the little details done right. You don't necessarily need a crazy profile in order to make something work. Exactly. It's precise. This is a precise tool for a precise job. 
Well, I'm and really looking can... forward to uh, to testing this one out because this, this has oh, yeah. that RPM steel. I like the design, okay. and I'm I'm eager to eager to put it through its paces for sure. Have fun with it. It is. I have I've done some dumb stuff with my current one with my with my uh, my proto just to see how this steel holds up, and I am genuinely surprised of how well this this steel does under stress. And you know what? For a small knife, I mean, I'm not going out there and you know hacking wood apart. Actually, I did, but you know, that's, <laughs> either here nor there, you're not supposed to. But no, it's um, it showcases the new material really well. Very I think cool. it allows this knife to really kind of fit between so many different categories and still come out as a really easy to carry tool. All right, so moving on. So next, let's go to our new recoil lock series so we have uh we debuted this at shot show i believe well we, we technically debuted it prior to shot show but it came into its final form at shot this year so this is the cgrb kicker this has our new recoil lock system so you see this this nice little bolt up top the recoil lock is kind of our take on a crossbar lock this is something that is easy to access and keep your fingers out of the way of the blade when you're closing it so you have multiple ways to to uh, close this knife. Deployment's nice on that nice flipper. This still has our usual ceramic ball bearing, so it's nice and smooth. But with this lock, you get a nice, solid, secure grip on there. You can actually reinforce the lock by pressing on the the, uh, the piece on top there. And you can close it like you would. Let's just say uh, there are other styles of crossbar locks that work by pinching both sides. Close it like that. You can put your finger on top right here, keep your fingers out of the path of the blade and close, oops, like so. Or just use a single side, close like so. And the one that I kind of like, which I, I'm not sure if I can do under a camera, I kind of like a, like you would do on, uh, let's say a back lock. I like a suicide drop where I actually half close it on my finger. And because the flipper is extra large, it allows it to just kind of drop on the finger and then securely close with no fingers close to the blade. So that is the kicker. So I'll put that one down and grab the other recoil locker version we have. So we also have redone our crag model, which has been vastly popular with the recoil lock as well. So now we have a big old honking, honking cleaver with the recoil lock. And this thing, uh, man, this thing is just, oh, it's a little bit of a finger guillotine. It is scary fast, but it's just a really cool application for this lock. Like you get this big honking cleaver blade that is fast and i'm surprised i'm able to do it at this angle under a tiny camera but man this is this is really fun to play with sorry i'm, I'm just enjoying myself right now <laughs> well it's always been a really fun knife even without the uh the recoil lock even the liner lock versions it's mm -hmm. it's just a great design to pull out of your pocket it's it certainly makes an impression but it's not so overly large that it's burdensome it's a very useful knife as well yeah, and now with this one, you just get a bit more functionality out of it and a bit more, I mean, I, I could say there's more fidget factor, but I will also say this is a very strong and substantial lock. This is meant to be used, you know, this is a hard to use knife and it still holds up really well with the recoil lock. So this is just, they're both actually quite substantial. If I put them, let's see, let's look at the stock thickness on these guys. They're both relatively substantial knives. In fact, I think the... Uh, yeah, you know, they're the same same stock thickness, but these are meant to be workers. They're meant to be users. They're meant to go out there, do your job, get them, you know, get them dirty and, you know, get out just fine. And they both hold up really well. These are both in D2 steel. Uh, so we wanted to go with a nice tough D2 on these ones. These uh, have the standard artisan clip. So you see the nice bent steel clip right there, the, the deep carry profile. And... What can I say? Like this one already is tried and true, and this one is a is pretty standard to what CGRB has done in the past. We want reliable, tough, and heavy use knives that work well, and the kicker is a good one. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. This and, one's already great, <laughs> and it, it does. Yeah, sorry, it is a really nice addition to that Crag model. I do think it works. Uh, it, it integrates quite quite nicely, like it was almost meant to be there. All right, the next thing we've got here. Um, you guys, of course, uh, kind of shook things up a lot last year with Artisan Cutlery with the, uh, the yeah. Kinetic Tool. And okay. you've got something, uh, kind of an extension into the CJB, CJRB range with that too as well. We do. So we have now the Kinetic Flip. This was meant to pretty much take the Kinetic Tool 
And uh, the original proto of this was actually designed for Artisan. We wanted to produce a more budget-oriented uh, kinetic tool, but then it's like, well, here's CGRB. Let's drop it into that category. So this one works the same. Oh, boy, I don't think it's even going to show up with, with my frame rate, but good. You can't see how bad I am. But this has all the same properties, the same mechanism. I actually find it to be a bit more fidget-friendly with the profile, but one thing I actually really enjoy on this one, we opted to just make it a bottle opener. It is only a bottle opener and a trainer, nothing else. Uh, it works, I mean, it pops bottles just fine, but the profile of this is really nice and the price point has been reduced by a, a good margin compared to the Connect Tool. So for those who really like the Connect Tool, already own the Connect Tool, or just want to start and try out our automatic, uh, our automatic <laughs> ballet song mechanism, this is available now from CGRB. And we uh, did this in several types of G10. So this one has the uh, camo green. We do a black. We do a gray. Uh, I believe we do a regular. O... I totally don't remember if we do an OD green, but I know we do a black and a gray and a camo. Yeah, a few different so, colors available for sure. Yes, yeah, so that would be the kinetic flip. All the nice features of the kinetic tool with a slightly pared down and uh, equally fun package. Indeed. So this is... We've been working on this one for a bit. We finally got it out earlier this year, and it's just been it's it's been a fun one to have. It really is. There are a lot it's of just, fun, and even if you don't fancy yourself a ballast song flipper, just you know, take this to a party and have fun when a bottle needs open. You're certainly gonna gonna get your money's worth when you when you pull it out in that kind of situation. This is the ultimate backyard barbecue tool. If you want to impress your friends and look look cool, this is like, come on. You have an automatic bottle opener that's a ballet song for sure. Come on, how for do you sure. look any cooler than that? Or, you know, you look like a total nerd like us, you know, just a nightmare. It's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Well, that's all I've got on the table in front of me. Uh, but you, you've told us you've actually been able to collect a few more uh, prototypes and stuff that are uh, coming down the pike here real soon. Sure. I do have some. I also have some of the, the, the uh, already out but haven't quite been seen because, well, no Blade Show artisan models. So is it okay if I throw a couple of those up there right now? Just We'd to love to see them. What Absolutely. Yeah, the, we'll call this the what you miss in the meantime segment. So let me switch back over to the table cam. First, we have the Tacit designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, we've had this at a few shows as of late. We just took a little time to kind of iron out the, the styling of this one. And the final version of this knife is awesome. This is kind of a low profile oops, centering centering bit more tactically oriented knife. This one we have a Damascus and Micarta. This should be available in several different styles. We've uh, made an elongated flipper on this one to really allow you a lot of space to get that hit. We've actually thinned out the stock and the profile on this one, kept that internal jimping, and we have adjusted the detent so you can actually use this external stop pin as a thumb stud, which I don't know how we did. That was just magic. <laughs> uh, but this came out excellent and has been, it's been, it's such a neat knife. Like this is so comfortable in the hand. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with the work that Dirk Pinkerton does. Every time I handle something he does for us. And honestly, I, I own several of his customs and Dirk is a wonderful guy and his designs are just, there's something great about them that I can't put my finger on, but this one would have never been in my personal wheelhouse. But after handling this one, this is just, so cool. No, it's a great little size too. I've been a fan of that knife. Um, we got it here uh, a few weeks back. I think we were able to mm -hmm. have some stock in here at the Knife Center. And it is, it's a great little size. It's a very nicely thought out design uh, and a really aggressively cool blade shape, I think. Yeah. And the cool thing about this one, like one of the many cool things about this one is one, the size is surprisingly small. Like the handle is really not that big. And Dirk's whole idea behind this is it's a hand minimized folder which means that you can pretty much have the whole knife centering just have the whole knife disappear in your hand and for me like you see me i got small hands i got i got very relatively I, i'm not even gonna say relatively they're small and i have given this to guys who uh, who wear double xl size gloves and they're like yeah that fits great and like how is that possible if it's just right in my hand how does this fit just right in your hand when we are so we're, we're glove sizes apart that's I why we know. that's why we pay guys like Dirk to figure that stuff out. I, I yes, exactly. The guy <laughs> just has some kind of magic behind him. Also, I'm really happy with the fact that we slimmed down 
the profile of this knife a bit. The original one was a very chunky knife. And while I thought it was great, it didn't really strike me as that low profile, like, you know, uh, low drag tactical kind of knife. And this definitely reduces the size quite a bit and makes it a lot more, I, I'd say it's more fluid in the hand, as well as being a lot more accessible in the pocket instead of taking up a ton of real estate. So yeah, so that is the Tacit and that is designed by Mr. Dirk Pinkerton. Let's move this one off to the side. All right, what, what do you have next on. for us, sir? All right, so let's see. Let us go on to something that you guys are very familiar with. This is actually the full-size version of this one, but this is the non-locking Archeo, designed by Dylan Mallory. And uh, you guys have done an excellent <laughs> special edition with us where there's a small one with that really cool topographical uh, uh, orange G10 that is just so slick, but the full-size one is available now. This has that token pointy kind of spear point Warncliffe style blade that Dylan Mallory did so well. We removed the opening hole on this one because, well, uh, don't it's supposed to be it's supposed to be just a one-handed opener. And I think the the lack of the hole actually works out really well for this one. You see, we did this in that nice stainless Damascus that we do. It's a VG10 core Damascus. Kept the handles with G10, but we did add a titanium clip and a titanium backspacer. Adds a little bit of color contrast. Sure. And uh as with the other ones, there's that little hole where we have our little pin on the lanyard here. And that hole there, um, I don't know if you uh, mentioned it yet here, is because this is a non-locking folder that mm -hmm. still flips just like any other flipper out there, but you it still does. are able to get that degree of safety with that extra pin as well. Mm -hmm. And it does allow you to, either, to also, I mean, for me, I really like the idea that this locks closed. It's not necessary because honestly, with a pocket clip, if it's in your pocket, it's not really a problem. I'm not expecting it to fly open. But, you know, the fact that this works on both sides, I think, is a great feature. And it does just add a little something to this knife. And, you know, I, I know this was mentioned before. The fidget factor on this knife is just so great. I like, totally yeah, missed to get a non-locking design that's, that, that is that fun to just open and close. I don't know yeah. that I've, I've encountered it before this particular model. Yeah, um, we really dialed in that double ball style detent. It's a pretty simple mechanism. It's nothing new. It's been on the market for quite a while, actually, for, for several years. It just wasn't what I would call a popular style. But now with the advent of more non-locking folders being on the market and people getting more into kind of like modern traditionals, this is a departure in, in multiple directions. It's it's not traditional. It's, you know, it's a very different kind of non-locking. It doesn't have a back spring. It doesn't act like a slip joint. But it's just really satisfying and fun. And the fact you can have a non-locking knife with a flipper is great. You know, it's great in restricted areas for one. I mean, we've had a lot of European customers and European dealers coming by and saying how much they love this because you can finally have a flipper that, you know, it's like, yeah, you can finally have a one-handed opener because it's non-locking. For sure. Most knives like that, you just don't have that option. And I will say the style of this knife really comes through on this design. I think that this very sleek kind of race car like styling just works so well with this because it feels quick. It feels agile. And I think that just it works well. The Archeo is such a nice design. I mean, no wonder we've done so many of them. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan's it designs is. are excellent. It is. I mean, our, our, uh, our small exclusive version of that has been very popular. And for those folks out there who missed out on the first run and have been waiting for it to be back, we are expecting our next batch uh, very soon. So if you're, if you're watching this video when it's going up, uh, then you should be able to get that uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, this yeah. month, I believe, is our, our target time frame for this. We're, we're working on them. We're working on them. I think this should be almost done. All right. Excellent. So moving on, moving on. Let's go to another designer one that everyone's been waiting for. We have... The small version of the Rayla Conoco Centauri. Excellent. Everyone, everyone was asking for this one. We will, this one's got the Damascus. We will also be doing an S35 version, but this one comes in just under three inches. This is an amazing everyday carry knife. Also, if you look how slim this is with the carbon fiber, with the really nice milled pocket clip, this thing carries so easily, especially because it's a front flipper. You don't have anything, you know, sticking out in your pocket. And this is just, it's such a good knife. The original Centauri was a 
absolutely huge hit for us that came at such a strange time because the release was in january right before stuff happened so <laughs> it was a unnamed. Very, <laughs> stuff to be unnamed but it was an odd release time and it still sold like absolute hotcakes and we finally managed to get this one out uh actually a good while ago but it's it's that one that everyone's still like oh where is it what's happened it's like it, it's available right now like it, we have it and this is look at look at look at that size like it's just enough for the hand it's a great everyday carry the the blade profile on this really works well to for small tasks but it's got enough robustness to handle much bigger kind of you know it, it does well for all kinds of work i think this actually cuts above its size quite a bit especially with that that kind of I, i'm not sure if i call it a sheep's foot but sheepish foot kind of blade yeah i've been calling it sort of a modified warncliffe and the thing that struck me about the large one, which I think just, you know, I haven't held the small one in hand yet, but what I feel like comes through in the photos at least is the large one always struck me as being a very aggressive cutter. You have a lot mm -hmm. of power in that blade shape, despite a it being a, a fancier design in a way, really a, a large gentleman's folder. Yeah. And this one feels genuinely gentlemanly. I think it really still is an aggressive cutter, but it really doesn't look like it anymore. It's certainly in, in hand. I think it feels very light. It's got a very kind of soft, light touch because of that curved clip, because of the curved sides, because there's no flipper. It feels like something you just pull out, do your light cutting and done. But if you want to take this into work, that's a lot of blade. Like there are plenty of knives out there with blades that are not quite that big that would be considered very, uh, very uh, capable cutters. And this just, it does it well. It cuts well. It works well. It like it goes in the pocket so nicely. Mm -hmm. I love how this front flipper works on here. As I miss that one. Jeez, hold on. Let me, let me, hand goes around the mount. But it's just, it's so satisfying. And just, oh, man, I, I have, I got nothing bad I could say about the design. Ray has been so great with us. And he's been such a nice guy and worked so hard to get this out there. And we're really happy with this design. And, you know, I can't fault anything. Ray Laconico is just such a good dude. Everything he touches turns to gold. He has just such great design lines and design. Just, uh, the thought that goes into his pieces works so well. I actually feel kind of bad that my background's making that carbon fiber look a little little funky on this guy. Let's, let's move it closer to the camera. There we go. So, yeah, the carbon fiber on this just keeps it light it keeps the profile nice it keeps it classy and i think with the damascus and the carbon fiber i think this just has such a classy look to it absolutely, and, absolutely. Uh, so happy with this all right so i'm just going to move this one away and switch over to an in-house design so you saw the the recoil lock models so now we have the og this is the blowback this has a full titanium version of the recoil lock so this is actually a fully milled piece with a spring housing that acts as your locking system it is just so fluid and i just can't get those these angles right under this tiny camera but oh man it's such a fast deploying knife and it really has this very satisfying clunk when it opens Clunk in a good uh, way. Oh, yeah. It's like it's a satisfying just thunk when it opens up. God, it is such a neat knife. And this is actually the one that we were working on for quite a long time. We've actually gone through several several iterations of this particular knife to come to this point. This was kind of in conjunction with making our own style of lock. And we've had a few of these that just the lock wasn't quite what we wanted. We had the protos. You probably saw them at shows previously. And, you know, this is the, the version we finally settled on, and I think we got this one. One, I, I love this Bowie-style blade on here. I think it adds a bit more, it, it adds kind of a bit of aggressiveness to it that I really like. I like that we slim down the handle a bit, so you get a lot of purchase on it, and it really kind of it doesn't, it's not overly big. It still feels dynamic, and there's something very kind of mechanical about this design it's a little it's a little blocky in a good way it feels 
machined. It feels like there's something going on here that was almost like, you know, I think one of the original names someone recommended for this one back in its early stages was they wanted to call it the Megatron. I'm like, I don't think I don't I don't think we could do that, but I, I don't I think copyright uh, will be kind yeah, to us if we do that. that. I don't want Michael Bay mad at me. I, I don't want I don't want to deal with that guy. Just but think of the explosions. It, oh man, so many explosions. But just look at the profile of this. It is it's something different. And I, I think that's something really neat. And then with the with the the recoil lock, man, it is just so hard under this tiny there we go. Just that nice smooth action. This is such a cool piece. So that is the the blowback. And that kind of this 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 is kind of a, a good indicator of where artisan is trying to go try to go. We're trying to make something different. We're trying to do a little experimentation. We're trying we're trying some new things. And this is this is a good look at it. This is still a very good functional knife with some small changes that give it a different level of functionality. And we're proud of that. It's 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 different. And honestly, I just I just really love the blade. <laughs> like, I just love the way that blade looks. <laughs> like look at that. Yeah, man. All right, Russell, we're um, those look really good and we're running a little short on time, but we okay. do want to take a look at those prototypes. Uh, right. So take take it away. I'm excited. All right. I will make this as quick as I can. <laughs> so let's start off with one really cool piece. We have uh, to start working with Mr. Michael Gavco. And tell me that is not a Gavco looking blade right there. This is the great white. Yeah, could have never yeah. guessed that was a Gavco. Oh, yeah, no, never, no, never, never in a million years. <laughs> yeah, we're actually going to be doing this one with full titanium scales, but we actually got the nice, uh, the paddle style clip, which I am in love with. And look at that blade. <laughs> Man, that's just so crazy. Nice, smooth action. Has a great flipping action. Nice thumb deployment, too. And this thing is super lightweight. Uh, we'll see what it's like after the Titanium version comes out, but this is just so cool. So that is the great white designed by Gavco Knives. Let's put that one down. Let's go on to another. Oh, yeah, this is a cool one. So we have a new Everyday Carry fixed blade. Haven't seen I'm a lot a of fixed blades. Already. We're trying to get into this already. So this is designed by Mr. Crazy Sharp himself, Michael Emler who is a, what the heck, the guy is a darn genius when it comes to sharpening, but he had this model at USN uh, last year. This is his Sea Snake, and this is designed to be kind of a an everyday carry for a big dude. Now, you can see that my hands, I got small hands, and there's a lot of space in this knife. Uh, Mike wears double X size gloves, and this fits his hand perfectly. And if you look at the stock on this guy, this is meant to be a thin, slicey, everyday use. This isn't, this isn't a go out in the woods and beat it up kind of knife. This is a around the house, general tasks kind of knife. We ran this one in RPM 9, so this is going to have that great new steel that has some great properties to it. And this is just an excellent user. Comes with a nice Kydex sheath and has a nice snappy engagement. This can be worn as a neck knife. This can be worn as a belt knife. You can just throw this in a backpack or a bag. It is an excellent size with a blade that is just about three inches and just a great small everyday carry. Just an excellent design for use. And this is this is just a really good knife in hand. I'm really impressed with this one. So put that one down. All right, let's see. Next, let's go with something from a new designer. This is the Arian, Arian, like the horse from Greek mythology, designed by Cerberus Knives. Now, uh, Chris Ortiz from Cerberus Knives is actually a scale maker. He is a scale maker who does a bunch of really cool stuff. I, I think his his pieces are awesome. But he is a he's a gosh darn wizard with a CNC machine. So when he sent us this design, this was already done and ready to go. Everything was Fully all hammered, baked, essentially. Out. Yeah, and look at that. Look at this design. It's super clean. And look at that, that nice small clip. The blade is, it, this is not a small knife. Like this is a big boy knife. That's so we have it in front of my face. There we go, that's a bit better. But this has just that nice clean leaf shape, really like neutral air goes handles, just plain flat tie. I think we're probably gonna put a little machining on here to kind of, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of texture. I, I yeah. like the neutrality of that handle. Again, you're gonna work with all kinds of different it's, hand sizes. What kind of blade so length are we looking at there? 
This one we're looking at almost a we're looking at just a 3.75, almost four. It's a big knife. And yet you still got a nice that. acute point there if you needed to do some detail work. And the yes. blade is is tall enough, it looks like, to take advantage of that, you could really choke up on the blade itself and pinch the blade, and you'd have that nice needle point right at the end. Oh, it's it's this thing cuts like crazy. On top of that, look how slim this thing is. For a knife that's a chunker, this has got a good profile to it. So Man, I, I'm I'm really happy with this one, and it just carries so nicely. And this thing, I, I'm a middle finger flicker. Like this thing flicks great. And with the shape, I know a lot of people have been kind of like, "Oh, that's that's a weird looking hole." It's like, no, oh, this thing works fine. Deploys fine great. To me. Oh yeah, but this is the Arian, designed by Cerberus Knife Works. Cerberus Knife, Cerberus Knife, not Cerberus Knife Works. Wonderful stuff. Love Chris's work. The guys, just wonderful. And then, all right, so next one, we have the Arroyo. Designed by Dirk Pinkerton. And as, uh, oh boy, so you got, there's one great thing about this guy. So, one, this thing feels wonderful in the hand. This has that nice kind of, I, I guess we call it an upswept Bowie almost. But here's the cool thing look at that stock. This thing is a slicer. This is an absolute razor blade. And we ran this again in our RPM 9. So, this is just a performance beast when it comes to slicing. Also, you can't quite see it on the JG10, but we actually milled out some texture on the sides of this handle and then inset, kind of just kind of milled out a, a rounded section in the center. So this clip sits very nicely. Also nice reset screws on that guy too. Yeah, you can kind of see that a little bit, it looks like, through the uh, through the, the feed here. Yeah, it's it's a little tough with the camera, especially because if I had the gray or the black, there, there we go, you can see it a bit there. If I had the gray or the black one, it would show up a little bit better, but the natural G10 works here. But just, this is very Dirk Pinkerton to have the jimping on the inside. He's got the uh, the jimping, that kind of side jimping on the spine, but this is just a beautiful cutter. Yeah, so those are some of the upcoming prototypes we have. We have this little, they should be coming out relatively soon, but we are really excited for this year, despite all the uh, setbacks that 2020 has provided i think we're going to come out by the end of the year with some really cool stuff that's going to be really interesting really fun and i just oh man it's such neat stuff that's great but yeah <laughs> all right guys thanks for sticking around thanks for checking out this video with us make sure to let us know in the comments what you thought of these knives and we'll leave links in the description it'll take you over to knifecenter.com so you can see all of the latest stuff from artisan and cjrb Russell, man, thanks for taking part in our Blade Show Week celebration. Really appreciate your time. Absolutely, man. David, it is always a pleasure. This is always fun. I love chatting with you guys. And, you know, I, love, I just love chatting. I love talking <laughs> Well, we love having you. Thanks so much, guys. Pleasure. Keep sticking around for the rest of our, uh, our Blade Show Week coverage. We've got a lot more to come. Thanks so much. Thanks, David. You guys take care.